Good morning, good morning. Totally uh, excited about the week and I am down at a conference. I've led a couple of uh, meetups and done a couple of talks where I am super excited about what I'm seeing and what I'm really present to and it was so much fun leading a talk down here for about 40 people about managing change. What it takes, what it's like and um, how to make the best of making big choices in our lives. I wanted to share with you guys is something I've been working on. The seven habits or the seven ways to conquer the fear around big change and how to really be able to bring it into a framework, bring it into a framework where we can make the most sense of it and we can allow it to go run its course and still stay on track because that's really the big deal. Brene Brown famously says that we are hardwired for struggle. And if you're not familiar with your, her work, it's fantastic. So she says that we're, you know, biologically, because of our ancestry or because of just the way humans are, we are hardwired for struggle. That that is just part of the vernacular. And if we're hardwired for struggle, that we're gonna struggle no matter what happens. So whether you, you know, whatever that thing is that you're doing right now, which isn't working for you, and you, there are parts of everybody's life where they go, ah, it's just not, it's just not working out. I don't like it so much and I really wish it was different. We all have some part of that in our life. And that feels like it's kind of a struggle that you don't have it. Well, making any significant shift is also gonna cause struggle. That's kind of the way how it goes. We often struggle just where we're at and to get somewhere else, we're also gonna experience some version of struggle as well. And that's just part of the human experience. That's kind of who we are. Well, cool. Well, how can we take this knowledge, how can we take this knowledge and bring it to something that we can actually leverage in our favor? One of the things we have to do is we have to be aware of that we often um, distinguish no difference between struggle and suffer. So we've got struggle over here, we've got suffer over here. Very often those are two phrases that are collapsed. So struggling and suffering are one and the same in our world. What I'd like to do is actually pull them apart, right? Like a struggle is, is I couldn't do 100 push-ups today, but I'm trying to do 100 push-ups a day. That's a struggle. Um, and suffering is, I don't feel good, this doesn't feel right, my chest hurts, I'm doing push-ups and it doesn't feel right. And I don't wanna do that anymore. Well, both of those are struggles. They're just a different way of looking at it. And when we change our language away from the from um, language of suffering to a language of struggle, we get to take the weight off of the, it's just not working out and I don't understand it, is let's, let's start shifting the language. That's the invitation, start shifting the language. It's like we're hardware for struggle. It's not gonna go perfectly the first time through or maybe even the third time through or the seventh time through. But if it's the goal that we're committed to, we're hardwired for struggle. We gotta learn the lessons that we need to learn to get to that result anyways. It's all part of a big process. Struggle is part of the process of change. You cannot do change without being present to the struggle. You cannot create big change. And the bigger change you're looking to make, whether it's uh, dramatically increasing your income, whether it's finding new love in your life or reinventing love in your life, whether it is getting that new job, doubling your income, finding new clients, whatever that thing is, you're going to experience some struggle. And the bigger the change you're looking for, the more likelihood you are to experience struggle. But that's just part of the process and you can't get from here to there without it. People seem to think that they wanna go from here to there and it shouldn't include struggle or it shouldn't include some discomfort. But the sooner that we can get used to the fact that it's part of a process, the easier it's gonna to be to start seeing it for what it is when it shows up, when you're like, oh my God, I just can't do another day of it. You're just gonna be like, oh God, I'm doing that thing I always do, which is I'm suffering. When really what it is, it's just a struggle and it's part of the process. So like back in the 50s and 60s, the mentality was really all about suck it up buttercup, right? And you know, where it's like, you know, like the boot camp of life. It's like there's some sort of a drill sergeant of life that, you know, you just do what you're expected to do and you do what you're told to do and don't mess around and get up and get done. And we don't care about your feelings. And it was such an extreme on one side that we found in the following decades where it all became about our feelings and where they hadn't been being addressed before, they're now being addressed, which has real value. 
with the exception of the fact that they suddenly became the thing that everybody focused on. So we were on one extreme over here, which was the suck it up buttercup. We then went to the other extreme over here, which is like, if you're not feeling like you're getting the results you want, then maybe you should be doing something else. Well, the reality is, is that it lives somewhere in between. At the suck it up buttercup, with, at the exception of all feelings, is a recipe for breakdown and dysfunction, absolutely positively. And um, it's a pass fail, you cannot get where you're going. That's, you know, it's like, you'll be that, you'll be that small percentage that gets the results, um, or you'll be everybody else. On the other side, it is a recipe for giving up on everything you, you wanna create in big change because it doesn't feel like it's what you think it's supposed to feel like. Reality is, it's somewhere in between. You have to take the actions, you have to gird up, you have to bring inner strength to get the actions done, and you have to be aware that you are a human being, you're having emotions, you're having feelings, and just acknowledge that's part of the process. And that's part of the big deal. Just allowing yourself part of your process is to have your feelings, but not give them as much significance as we often do. First things first, like whatever that goal is, whatever that goal is that you have, very often we jump into things, and I just did this recently. I took on a writing commitment, and I didn't think through the impact that I was committing myself to. I decided, but I didn't choose. I'm like, oh, I really need to do more writing. So I'm gonna to decide to write more. I'm gonna to decide to write a thousand words a day. But I didn't choose it. And I didn't choose it. And what the difference is, is that by choosing, we distinguish that we're choosing something. We're choosing something that has impact on our day, time, and energy. When we choose it, when we go, I know this is coming, this is something I say I want, and I'm going to do it right now, it is becoming something that we allow in our calendar, we expect is gonna cause the thing, the struggle, and that it's not just, um, a you know, it's not a decision like, oh, that seems like a good idea. No, it's something we actually choose. So the first piece is decide and then choose. I'm losing that weight, I'm doubling my income, I'm gonna find love in my life, I'm gonna create X, Y, or Z. The next question to ask yourself is, is it worth it? What's on the backside for me that's gonna make it worth going through all the struggle? Because things are gonna cause you struggle and the bigger the change, the bigger the experience of struggle you're going to have. This is the part I like too. Whatever that goal is, it's gotta have a measurable end. The next thing is, you wanna make sure that you write down whatever your goal is. So it's not just, I wanna feel healthier but it's actually, I wanna lose 20 pounds in the next 18 weeks. And then I want you to post it. I want you to post it physically in your home, on your mirror, in your bathroom, on your refrigerator, and I want you to tell people about it. Now, you may not put this up in social media, but it's important that you tell people about it because there's two things about that. First of all, the moment that you tell people about it, you're going to take more actions and be willing to be more uncomfortable to get the result because you already made the promise to people. You want people to know and they're gonna to wanna to support you and you need to make sure that you're sharing that with people so they can support you. It's not just the one thing. Now, you have people around you and if you're married like me, I have a beautiful wife who likes to support me in lots of different things, but she doesn't support me in everything. It's not that she doesn't support me, but I need to expand my network of people who support me because she can't be the one and the only go-to for support. So I might reach out to two people, like if I'm gonna lose weight, I might lean into two people who've lost a bunch of weight, who've gotten in great shape and are enthusiastic about it and tell them, hey, this is my goal, this is what I'm up to, and I'd love it if I, you'd be available to me just if I'm having a bad day or if I need a pep talk or I need a thing. Because people love to support other people, especially when they are perceived as somebody who's got it handled. So look in your life and say, who are those people for me and how am I gonna get that done? So that's the next thing is find two to three people that you can lean on during this big time of change when we're gonna be experiencing struggle and get that done. Expect that struggle's coming. Expect that feelings of why am I doing this and is this the right thing and I don't think I made a good decision. Expect it, it is coming and it's perfectly fine. It's exactly the way it should be. It shouldn't be in any other way because if you're in that place, it doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. It just means that you're having that human experience. And how we manage expecting the struggle is I want you, that was number five. Number six, we're gonna go into number six. Number six is I want you to write yourself a note. I want you to pull out a piece of paper and write yourself a note that says, dear so-and-so. And in this note, what I want you to write down is 
what you want, what you would say, what your today self would say to that person, to that self that's struggling, who's going through that part of whatever they're growing in, saying, man, this is awful, it's awful, it's awful, it's awful. What would you write that person to encourage them? What would you write that person to make the biggest difference for them? What do they need to hear? And the they being you, right? Like, what do you need, what will you need to hear when you're going through that struggle? Like, I'm 60 days into this, you know, losing weight thing. I'm, I, my weight isn't consistent. It's gone up, it's gone down. I'm doing my best. I'm eating what I'm supposed to. I'm exercising what I'm supposed to. I haven't done perfectly or I have done perfectly and I'm still not getting the results or I, I just want more ice cream. What does that person need to hear? What do they need to hear from you right now? So write that down on a note. Peel it off. Put it in an envelope. Yes, people, we're talking like a you, you know, United States Postal Service envelope. Put it in an envelope and seal it up and write your name on the outside. Open it only in case of struggle. And put it in your drawer. Just the awareness of having that envelope with those words on it that tell you what you need to know in the drawer is going to give you a huge amount of support because you will now have put into the world the piece about mentoring yourself, right? Like this is self-mentorship about that willingness to tell yourself, I can do this and I can do this because I know that I'm going to struggle. I know what the things are that are going to get in the way and I'm willing to chase it down and I'm going to give myself what I need when I'm in the, that moment of struggle. And the last piece, number seven, the last piece is celebrate all wins. Part of getting traction in any project is making sure that you acknowledge yourself and celebrate the things that are going right. There's plenty of time for us to give ourselves a bunch of heck about what's not going right because that's how we're hardwired wired to do it. Once again, we're hardwired for struggle. So we want to make sure that we're giving ourselves the things that we do need. So when we get traction, when we're finding the wins, we're like, you know, like whatever that 30 pounds thing is, I ate on what I was supposed to eat on today. That's awesome. That's a celebrate that win. Let's do a dance party in the yard. Whatever that piece is, celebrate your wins, share your wins so people can support you and go, yes, you're doing it, that rocks. So seven parts of conquering struggle and managing it is whatever your goal is, don't just decide it, but choose it. Number two is if it's a big shift, ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to go through all this struggle to get that result? Number three is write down your goal and post it physically, post it physically in your world and then virtually too. Uh, number four, uh, four is identify two to three people who uh, have gotten through this part of uh, whatever their journey is and would love to support you and let them know what you're up to and ask them if they, you can reach out to them. Number five, expect it. Expect the struggle because the struggle's coming and it's part of the process and it's exactly the way it should be. Because if it was any other way, you wouldn't be uh, affecting big change in your life. Number six, write yourself a note. Write yourself a note that says, dear, <laughs> I know you're going through a tough time right now. Give yourself some support. Give yourself some love. Give yourself some encouragement. You can do this. Or it's been like this forever. We can change together and put it in an envelope, seal it and put it in your drawer and know where it is in case you need it. And number seven, celebrate all wins. You're gonna get traction, whatever that traction is, celebrate the heck out of it. Uh, we, there isn't enough celebration in this world as it is. And those are seven different ways that you can manage struggle when you're trying to create tra change in your life. This has been Charlie King, Heroic Fatherhood. Look forward to seeing you then. See ya.